morning, ESM. What's poppin', gamers? Um, Next week or this week is Pride Week. It's Pride Week. The if week of the... If this show is airing on Friday, then next week is Pride Week. And if it's Monday, then it's Pride Week. It's Pride Week. Week. And Kai, what does Pride stand for? Uh, (laughs) Professionalism, respect, involvement. Those were the only letters I was assigned. I don't know the other two. I'm a great representation of our Spartan Pride. Don't worry, but the three we know, we will get into right after news. After news with Bennett. A 93-year-old woman found murdered inside Skyline Apartments Wednesday has been identified by family as Connie Tuori. Tuori had lived in the James Street apartment for years and remained fiercely independent until her death, her niece and great-grandnephew told Syracuse.com in the Post Standard. She was fearless, says her great-grandnephew Patrick Leone. Tuori graduated Syracuse University with an Italian history degree in the 1950s, taught in schools both locally and nationally, and a lifelong bachelorette loved to travel into her old age. Tuori was found dead in her apartment at 1.06 p.m. Wednesday after police were called to check on her. Syracuse police have not yet released details about the crime. Syracuse Police Chief Kenton Buckner said at a news conference outside the building that police are very familiar with the apartment building, having responded to drugs, larceny, burglary, overdoses, and assaults at the building. We continue to work with the management of this location, he said. Progress has been slow, and we are very frustrated with the efforts of the management of this building. Local football legend Tim Green and his son Troy own and manage the 364-unit, 12-story building at 753 James Street. They bought it in December of 2016. The building was the focus of a Syracuse.com and the Post Standard article in August of 2019, featuring tenants who complained about the deteriorating conditions of the building and said under the Green's watch, it's become a haven of drug use, violence, and other criminal activity. Russian President Vladimir Putin has reacted to President Joe Biden calling him a killer by challenging Biden to take part in a conversation with him broadcast live online. I've just thought of this now, Putin told a Russian state television reporter. I want to propose to President Biden to continue our discussion, but on the condition that we do it basically live, as it's called, without any delays and directly in an open, direct discussion. It seems to me that would be interesting for the people of Russia and for the people of the United States. Putin's invitation seemed to amount to a challenge to Biden to a live televised debate following a day of diplomatic uproar that began when Biden said he thought Putin was a killer in an interview with ABC News' George Stephanopoulos. Russia recalled its ambassador to the United States in response to the remark. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Bennett. That was some good news, news, Bennett. 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 what 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 is the it, in the in pride the first letter is p what the is first, that kind? uh that stands for professionalism uh what and, are we doing for it uh to, to, for that day it's gonna be an orange and blue day so everyone's gonna dress up in orange and blue got that like a professional like a professional what does the r in pride stand for owen i'm sure glad you asked you forgot it stands for respect and what are we gonna do on that day it's smoothie day, of course. Smoothie day. It's smoothie. one of two, but Alec will tell you about that one later. Wednesday, the I in Pride involvement trivia. That's about it. Yeah. What does I stand for? Involvement. I said that. Oh, we're doing trivia. We're doing trivia. Your teacher's gonna get trivia from the school. They're gonna send them trivia. It's gonna be a whole lot of barrels of fun. Alec wins, Shaw is gonna is tell the... us about the uh, the D and the E. In Pride, right after um, Weather with Bennett. Thanks, Bennett. Thanks, Bennett. Do you think people find that funny? I don't I don't think I've actually ever heard it go on. It probably does. It- Who's hungry for pizza? Please consider supporting senior class by participating in Dying for Dollars Day next, next Wednesday, March 24th at Trappers in East Syracuse. Present your flyer with your meal anytime from 11 a.m. to close for our, for our class to earn 15% of the proceeds. The flyers can be found on the ESM Instagram, email, or hard copies in Mrs. Kiwanis and Mrs. Mitica's room. Thank you for your support.
Good morning, everyone. Today we'll have a high of 35 with sun and clouds. It will be a bit chilly, though. Over the weekend, it looks like we will have some, a hot, sorry, some highs in the mid 50s and low 60s. It will be sunny. Moving on to next week, it will be highs in the mid 60s and expect some rain showers in the middle of the week. I'm Emily with your weather. Today's show is all about Pride Week, specifically the D and the E. The D, which stands for diversity, which is basically, you know, like bringing all kinds of different people together as one like awesome group, you know, like, oh, like something like a smoothie or like, like soup or burger. Like you get the idea, like that kind of bring everyone together to one awesome mix. And then the E in Pride stands for excellence, which is all about, you know, putting in those extra hours and that hard work and like really grinding to get like that last assignment done or like you know like for me in track like finishing that last lap you know things like that uh, this includes like sports at home in the classroom and just being excellent in life in general the girls volleyball varsity volleyball team plays their first away game at Auburn today in the NBA, the Washington Wizards beat the Utah Jazz 131-122. Bradley Bill had 43 points, and Russell Westbrook had a 35-point triple-double on the, and notched his 19th triple-double on the season. Four teams' fates have been decided as Texas Southern, Drake, North Pole State, and UCLA have all won their playing games and will play on Saturday. The madness continues today at 12-15 as Virginia Tech plays Florida in the first game of the round of 64. And I'm Tanner Sports. For me and everyone here at The Morning Show, have a great weekend.